Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of Adi Shokwe Live, the official Afrobeat podcast, where we break down the hottest topics in the culture. And of course, once in a while, I get superstars to join me in the building where I have some one on one time with them. As always, thank you very much for your subscriptions, liking, commenting, sharing. Keep doing that. The podcast needs it because with that, we get our voices bigger and we can support our big superstars out of Africa. As always, this is brought to you by the Energy God Dream. Be like the Energy God and be yourself. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm joined in the studio by an exciting artist from Africa, West Side of Africa, Gold Coast to be exact, not Accra. This is from the Konongo Zongo, yeah, as he calls it. Yeah, Ladies and like gentlemen, it. <laughs> it is the rising star, Black Sherry. Yeah. I like how heavy Konongo Zongo is. What? Yeah, um, for me, one of my favorite things about getting to know artists yeah. that are coming out of our continent is when they represent where they're from. Yeah. Whether you like it or not now, you have given Konongo a spotlight yeah. to whether they're Ghanaians, Africans, or anybody in the world. Really? Now we want to know, I want to know about well, Konongo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 Listen, yeah. we can start there. My brother Black yeah. Sharif, it's been an incredible two years for you. Yeah. But let's talk about before then. Before. This beautiful place you were born and raised. Yeah. Talk to me about Konongo. You know, like, um, neighbors, people <laughs> that like, I grew up with. If it wasn't for, like, after high school, they wouldn't know, like, I was singing and, and stuff like that. Wow. Like, people who was in school with me, like, through high school, knew I was singing in high school, mm. like, from year two. So, like, back home, I was riding bikes and dancing. <laughs> Yeah, and dancing at, at like um, weddings. No way. Like that taking small money, you understand? No if you way. go dance for weddings, like they spray they money. They will spray you money. Cut some for the <laughs> some pounds, like that. Yeah, till I got to high school, like year two, hmm. that was when I started writing. So I wrote, I was writing like for over a year. Poems? Just um, song? Music, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, for like over a year till final year. And I'm going to the studio for the first time, did my first song in final year. And wow. I brought it into school, played for my colleagues, and they liked it. And like when, that was when like it actually like started from everything. Like mm. the zeal got up and that this yeah, could actually happen. For real, yeah. In your neighborhood, in Konongo, you know, yeah. we know Accra, like that's the big city. Yeah, that's the Obviously big, yeah, we that's know the city, yeah. you know, we know um people talk about what's it called now? Kumasi, Kumasi, that's another popular yeah. area where a lot of entertainers are coming yeah. out from. Yeah. But in your area, yeah. who were the inspirations to you? Was it musicians? Are they doctors? Are they traders? Are they businessmen and women? Who did a young boy growing up in that little area look up to that? Uh, you know, these are the people that are doing well. You know, mostly like growing up in my area, you know, I'm from Konongo Zongo. Mm. You know, like, there are like pl plenty Zongos in Ghana. Mm. I'm from Konongo, so like I'm from the Konongo Zongo. And like Zongo is like the, they'll say the trenches, you understand, mm. the slums there. So like you grow up like seeing like risk takers, you understand mm. me? Yeah. Not really certain type of people, but like people like doing different stuff. Just to get paid. Yeah, taking their risks and so and stuff like that. So like you just grow up seeing lots of stuff that will give you like um this mindset to like choose where you wanna go. Hmm. Cause then you see like things from the red side, the blue side, you know the start of the red side, the end of the red side, the start of the blue side, the end of the red side. So like you choose where to go. And, like you choose your evil. Hmm. You understand me? Because you know, the world is it's not 100% right, there's no 100% left to it. Absolutely. Yeah, there's evil, there's good habits, things going on, so you just choose your evil, run with it, you understand me? So like growing up, you get hustle mindsets. <laughs> and like, it can actually like make you get comfortable too, because you don't need much to be happy. <laughs> just round town, you understand me? Uh, yeah, that's a bigger world outside. 
that was what I wanted to do with my music. And I saw I saw a little documentary with you where you went back home, yeah. and there was a part there that touched me in the sense that you're donating to develop yeah. the, the the mosque in the area, yeah. which means religion is a very important part yeah. of you. Talk yeah. to me about that. Yeah, you know, like most of this habits or like discipline that you grew up with most of them like i learned it from makaranta mm. you understand me yeah and like it helps you know you grow up to be stubborn though but you know there are some things that's bedrock like it's doctrine they knew it in your heart you can't go it's out. written there you understand me so like it's just there are just some good things that i learned from there that for like kids if it's beefed up and like you understand, everyone's going to feel like a lot of people kids will learn, learn stuff from. like that. Yeah, and, That's why you're yeah, donating. Yeah, grow up and be free and like, you understand me. Now, musically, listen, shout out to my sister, Ricky Davis. She was the first person to call me to say, I need to listen to an artist called Black Sheriff. There's a song mm -hmm. called First Sermon Out. Mm -hmm. And that was the, my first introduction to Black Sheriff oh. was that record. Yeah. Now, some people call it trap. Mm -hmm. Other po people just call it drill. Yeah. It has a variety of a elements variety in there, elements, yeah. but your voice is so powerfully high life. Yeah. Talk to me about the elements yeah. that make Black Sheriff as yeah, a musician. Music. Yeah, high life, like you said. Hmm. You understand me? Because like back in Konongo, actually, hmm. you understand me? Konongo is like, I'll say, round there. It's where I believe, like, high life is from, you understand me? Mm. Yeah, because Amachi Dede is from where I'm from. That's a legend. Shout out to Amachi Dede. You understand me? Rest in peace to Kofi B. Kofi mm. B is from where I'm from, too. Wow. You understand me? So, like, I grew up on, like, proper high life thing. And where I lived, I lived, like, right behind, like, a dead background. Thursdays and Saturdays, they come to, like, have fun. Just hours, play. Eat stuff, play stuff. So, like, I was just hearing stuff, you understand me? And, like, the first music that my daddy... The first time I met my daddy, the music hmm. that he put me on was reggae music. Hmm. So, like, my understanding of what arts and music should be was, like, something that people would listen to it and have a personal connection with it. Stories. Me? So, like, when I started making music, that was what I wanted to do. Do you understand me? Get, make songs that would create, like, personal relationship with, like, people that would listen to it. You understand me? Be something in their life. Hmm. You're a young man. Yeah. You're, you're, in, you're a young man. Yeah. You, most of your experiences is basically secondary school. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, basically. the lyrics to your records, to your music, are so mature, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to believe yeah. how young you are. Yeah. Most of your maturity, is it your mom? Is it your, your dad? I saw you talk about your grandmother. Mm -hmm. You know, where do you get all those life experiences yeah. and stuff from? I mean, you see, with me, I think it's been a habit. Hmm. I've learned to like know more every time. Do you understand me? Because I love to talk to people and get like get hear different perspectives. Do you understand me? And sometimes I just that was it, it happened to me like in high school. Sometimes when I was talking, I felt like I didn't know more. And I enjoy like people telling me stuff because then I had there was when I was growing up I had certain ways that I used to look at things. But I met people, I moved from Konongo to Kumasi for mm. high school. For high school. I met people with different perspectives. So like growing up and how it, it the 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 kind of like influence it had on me shaped mine. I felt like I there's a need to know more mm. about whatever mm. I was interested in. You understand me? Yeah, so it's been that. It's been actually that trying to be a better man, you understand me? And like knowing more and like saying, not doing, not doing over what I know. Mm. You understand me? Yeah, because I feel like whatever that I know and I believe and with respect and love that I have for what I'm doing, if I do it, it's divine. Absolutely. Because Lord knows that's what I know. That's what I can do. That's So you're best doing the best you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was I was researching, I think it was a while ago, a couple of months ago, when I heard that whilst you were in secondary school, there was like 
you know, almost like an epidemic in school yeah. where students had passed died. away. People died. How yeah, does died. exactly how does that affect young people, especially yeah. knowing that some of your friends passed away yeah. in such tragic circumstances? Yeah. What did that do to you as a young person and a lot of people around you? You know, obviously. like if, obviously I was living in the school with fear, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Because it was, I think it was second year, first, first week, second year. And what was it? Was it food poisoning or what, what was I it? I didn't know. They said it was H1N1. So God like, so damn. So came to like give us shots for the school. Like, oh, we lost, we lost, we lost like nine, 11 friends. Wow. Yeah. That was mad. I, I was like, people, not only me, like people were scared for like a whole year in school. Some were like got recovered when we were in our final year. Mm get into write our final, final paper. That was when some were recovering. We, we, we're getting yeah. better psychologically. Yeah, it was, it was actually. Like, and do you think that has impacted your music as well? Yeah, yeah, actually, for real. Because it's, with me, like, it's now that I, I, I don't actually, like, try to, like, focus on the, the, the things that drags me or mm. the negative things that I don't count them. Mm. Because now I've grown to like adjust with it, that it won't stop coming. So I just need to count on the positive and learn from Facts. that only. Facts. You understand me? Because first I was like, well, it's only pain, pain, pain things. Hmm. You understand me? But then I found message in that too, and I found life in that. Yeah. I found life in pain, found life in music. So I was, so that, that was what I was doing. Like, even if I wasn't paid, getting paid with the music, I would still be doing music. Because it makes you feel I good. Because I found life in that. That was what I found life in. And I wanted to stop schooling in secondary school. Wow. Yeah, but, but the music made me love school. Because then, when I came back home, I wasn't making so noise like 10, 11 p.m. I can't make You class can't living. make everybody but sleepy. When I'm in school, you can't do whatever. Can do whatever. So, like, I was just <laughs> so music made you love school. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, another thing that I wanted to speak about is obviously, the first sermon is what? went crazy yeah from the song to the video did it look when i watched the video it almost looked like this was an established star yeah. that knew that this was going to be a big record yeah. did you know that that was a big record when you made it or what was it about that record that you like, felt like None of it was planned. Hmm. Like the video, the recording of the song, nothing. I had just gone to the studio to like done my tape. Hmm. Yeah, and I was leaving. And I had the beats that sent from my friend from Germany, Star X Stalin. Ghanaian. Shout out to my Ghanaian Stalin, that's my brother. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's my brother, yeah, I've known him for a while. Yeah. yeah. Sent me, I have, we have a, he, made, he made first and second sermon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so like I had the, so we, I just dropped the beat to my producer and we rapped to it. And we took the song home. So we were listening to it back home when we got home. Like, yo, this be cold. So we called the boys, yo, jam. Moro pull up, make we shoot video. Like. So they bought camera, one camera like that. So we, and jam had just bought a car. Yeah. And that was it. Oh, so we are just walking around the hood and shooting. And I was just rapping to the team. <laughs> you understand me? Yeah. So what was the first sign that you knew that, yo, it looks like this thing is catching fire? Yeah, it was going it? off on Twitter. Hmm. Yeah, you know, we used to go off with stuff like that, but this time it was like going crazy. I didn't just, I didn't see like seven k views in a day, you understand me? Like that. So I knew, I knew, I knew like this time we have listeners, like people actually want to know what one was behind hmm. the voice, the message, everything. And so, so like that week, I wrote second sermon. Wow, yeah. the week first sermon took off? Yeah, I wrote the second sermon that week. Yeah, it was, that one too was just a normal thing. I had a video. The, the, um, the instrumentals yeah. on the phone. So I plugged in here, and we just we we just take strolls. When you're in a car, you see us. Hmm. Yeah, that's how I be in a car. You can see me. You can walk. You can see me. You associate with it. That's how I be in there. <laughs> you understand? Me? So like, there are some people that they go tell you, oh, sheriff, tell me they see him. Like about two years, you know, see him, but you go. Pass them, say, ah, I just saw Sheriff, Sheriff, just... That's so you're about, you're you about, I mean, you're not... I the inside, active, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, active. So, like, one time we were just taking shows and I was just making it, walking and writing it. Hmm. Yeah. 
So I got home and I had the song just that evening. I went to the studio, linked some, made that song too. Yeah. Listen, the both records completely went off, not only successful in Ghana, mm -hmm. but found its way into Nigeria. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Black Sheriff becomes a pop. I think you are the only or the first Ghanaian to top the charts in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah big number one for days. Absolutely. Yeah, Talk to me cool. about the love that you're receiving across in Nigeria, especially at a time when people felt like the Ghana Nigeria yeah. say no support, they did that yeah. side. And you know, you know what's crazy? The, the love is not only from Lagos, not from Abuja. PH City, oh, everywhere. Hmm. Uh, cool, brother. <laughs> Sometimes I just sit back behind the. The Twitter, the, nah, the the back end. Mm. See you are going in the cities, and you know, Shazam is going crazy everywhere around Anambra, mm. everywhere cold like that. So I say, nah. And you know, the first time I got to Lagos, I felt like I was in a car. So I was like, nah, bro. The no people was... there everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we just have different names. Absolutely, nah, Lagos. With Poco running the town. Poco, yeah. yeah. Talk to Jago. me about your relationship with Poco. Poco, Poco and Jago. Yeah, they, yeah, for real. Poco, Poco is real, rapping the songs, lyric for every, lyric. Every song. Every song. So like, I, I, I played like six songs for Poco before I dropped the tape set. And he liked 45 so much. It's, it's like, I don't know. You see, some link. Some link ups are divine. Hmm. You understand me? And with me, like I think that's how it's been with every person I've met. We just naturally just bonds like that. Hmm. Everyone, everyone I've met. Poker show me love, real love. And I appreciate him for that. Big blessings to you, man. Absolutely, me, man. Yeah. Obviously, once that kicked off, the second sermon went really? crazy. You yeah. had the you had the African giant. Really? Yeah. Listen, that's that's a collaboration that cost people millions. Yeah, he oh, jumped on that and came out to support you heavy. Yeah, what is what's that relationship like? You know, being you're having Bernard as a collaborator yeah. and also having a relationship as we saw him show up for yeah, you yeah, in London. But Bernard only yeah, pulled off yeah. a whiskey, you know. Yeah, well. <laughs> Trust me, only superstars burn are pulling up for, yeah, exactly. and he pulled up for you. What's that like to yeah, have that relationship? It's, it's big brother, big junior brother thing. Hmm. Yeah, it's like the first call till now that I'm talking to you. Yeah, man. Hmm. Like we talked on phone for, for the first time, like we knew each other for years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and so what, it's just like that from And what was it like shooting the video in Lagos? Because you shot the video for the remix in Lagos. Yeah, in Lagos. Madness. <laughs> Madness. <laughs> Yo. Nah, see. I, if I talk to you about Lagos, that, that week, that week, no, I think, it was, no, it wasn't that week, but I came, I went to Lagos again for homecoming, bro. Energy. <laughs> nah. So I'm saying Lagos is my, saying like a car for me, bro. If I did Lagos, be like, I did, I can. I know they see the difference. You know, it's, 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 what, 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 when you hear stuff like, oh, Nigeria, Ghana, no love, they did, but you see the amount of love that they show you, what, what, what do you think? I feel like more of the people that they talk say no love, they did, they know, like, sometimes they no go feeler, they no go feeler. Hmm. Do you understand me? Because just like how we receive our people. Facts. If we go the same. Facts. Facts. I've not met one rude person like that. Facts. Facts you go man. out there it's, and it's connect. Just go out there, man. It's love everywhere. You know, mm. it's on that's 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 how I don't be on the phone so much. Cause if you go outside, it's all love. It's all come, love and the phone is fake. That, yeah. Fake like that, like. <laughs> if you go outside, no one person did. <laughs> It's all love, smiles, and that's what I need. I don't know. I don't need to know what's behind the smile. That's what I need. I, I just want to see you Absolutely. Smile. Love like that, positive Ab energy. Do you understand me? But when it's on, like, people hide behind accounts and fake Talk stuff. Talk rubbish. Uh, don't believe in that reality. Just go outside. Everywhere, everywhere I've been is with love. Hmm. Do you understand me? Yeah, so I just love to believe in that. 
Mm-hmm. Listen, after the success of the first, the second, seven, obviously the buzz was going crazy. Mm-hmm. Ghana, Nigeria, you're topping the charts. And then Kweku the Traveler. Yeah. And not only did the song come and hit the ground running, but you also gave a TikTok worthy performance. Mm-hmm at the award ceremony yeah. where the water was falling. It yeah. became a TikTok challenge. That was probably the first yeah. thing that became a TikTok challenge in 2022 yeah. that was that strong. First of all, that performance, how much of that performance was Black Sheriff's planning and plotting, yeah. let me put the water here, so, da, da, da. I had, um, it was the, the, the organizers, they yeah. hit me up like they have this, idea of mm. like rain stuff and that but they, they, they don't know what sound or like and, and i had just recorded that song that mm. way and i was like nah i get what you think i have this sound come let me play some parts for you like so i met with them because i didn't want to send it over. yeah i met with them i played some parts for them told them how like it would, it would make sense like, so we started planning from there we sent the song over for like a rendition for them tenders and all that to get it live. To get it planned. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's how it happened. So like it was a two team thing. Yeah, with the organizers and all that. When you were performing, did you know that the world was going to react to mm-hmm. it that way? Not really. Huh. Yeah, I was just doing my thing like yo. See, every every time I do something that's like new to, or like an, a newly acquired knowledge or anything to my team. I feel like growth, you understand me? Because it wasn't always like this. Hmm. Yeah. There was a time that I wasn't even getting stage. Facts. To perform p- to people, you understand me? And now I get stage and like, I get people proposing to me nice ideas that I think like if my preparation is 99 and they miss the opportunity, it can, it, it can get me flying and everything, hmm. you understand me? So it's just that, yeah. It's Black Sheriff, there's Blacko, mm-hmm. Kweku, KKK. Yeah, K- K- yeah. How many names? So many. Where, names. <laughs> where are these names coming from? <laughs> Is there going to be a new name soon? Yeah, very <laughs> names everywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, like, I think it's a thing with me. And like any name I put, I put there, it goes. It just goes. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah, it's a thing with me. It's been with me, like, since from. Mm. Teenage years, you mm. understand me? Like in high school, I had like six names in high school. <laughs> All of the names are popular in there, you understand me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, with Ghanaian music over the last decade, yeah. there's been so many success stories, and you know, from the greats like, you know, Sarko, yeah, yeah. And, and the list goes on. Yeah. Who are some of the inspirations apart from your Amatya Dede and yeah, yeah, you know yeah. that who are some of the inspiration from the pop side, hip hop yeah. side? One hundred is Lamem. Lamem La La Gang. Yeah, Chrissy Arthur. Really, hmm. yeah, for real. That time I wasn't, you know, I was just fresh in high school. You understand me? And I was I was that guy in school, like, yo, what songs are popping? It's like, bro, La Mem, bro. This you, this new Kusia touching in this, this. Mm. So yeah, I can't lie. It's, I think that highlights, that highlights of my life is like Lamem Kusia. Mm. Yeah, then times, cause I was just spreading the thing. No one sent me. I was just on King USD. Just, just promoting, promoting for them. Promoting the thing. You understand me? It's like you, you hear these people. You know, still, yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Listen, now you've dropped your debut album. Um, Incredible project. Only one collaborator on that. Was that a personal decision to yeah. say, "Listen, man, I'm only putting the remix with Burna Boy and that, yeah. and that's it." Yeah. Was that your decision, yeah. and 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 why did you go with with? You know, that? like realistically, like when I when I realized like I had to drop the thing, and, like when I realized the thing had shaped up, hmm. I didn't have anybody on it. Wow. And it was just like burning out in the thing. So I just, like, I just felt like, let me put this thing together. Put it outside. Because I've been, I've been working on this thing to shape out the whole thing. And now it's up and ready. And I realized I have no features, no like nobody. And I felt like the story and everything was right. So like, I just needed to put it outside. Hmm. Yeah, but I have a lot of collaborations that 
working on coming out soon. How have you... The album has been received yeah. incredibly well Cold across man. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Ghana, mm -hmm. top to charts. Yeah. How have you felt personally about this offering that you've given the world? It's been, it's been, to me, I see it as a challenge. If you understand me? On myself and my creativity. Hmm. You understand me? And I love it. I love them challenges. Yeah. Because I feel like this is time to like, Prove me to me more than mm. people. Do mm. you understand me? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I love to get wild so much. Because people love me. Do yeah. you understand me? And I put things out, people love them. And most of the things that I put out, like, that, there are some songs that I don't get right to them, but I put it out, people love them. So if I create this thing and get mind blowing and it, and it goes outside, how is the people going to really? It's like anytime I try to like hundred up everything, mm. you understand me? And what any milestone or milestone or like any success I get, I take it as a challenge. You understand me? To keep doing more. Like, to keep doing yeah, more. Yeah, and exploring more because I feel like this it's divine. Like I say it in mm. the songs, I feel like there's more to this thing that. I've not seen yet, it's, uh, it's early stages. Mm. If I knock more, it could come. You understand me, yeah. Listen, your show in London was incredibly successful. Yeah, Congratulations yeah. on a sold out show. Yeah, yeah. But more importantly, an incredible performance. Mm -hmm. And you said that was your first, first ever. ever show. Yeah, Why mm. did you wait for London to be your first ever show? Because I know for a mm. fact that a lot of people would have been throwing so much money at you. Let's do one in Accra. Yeah. Let's do one here. Let's do. But yeah. why did you choose London you know, for your first one? It's crazy because like I just feel like this thing is so natural and divine. Like, <laughs> I've been myself. I've been practicing <laughs> having my own show like myself. You understand me? It was obvious. Yeah. Practicing with my vocal trainer and everything. Wow. Yeah. Doing road beaches and stuff. And it just happened to... Just, I, 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 I released two dates in London and New York. And I had to postpone it too. Because I was having issues with um, my band and face and stuff mm. like that. And I had to drop a new date for it. I didn't expect, expect that UK show to be like that. It was crazy, cause- It was crazy. Yeah, it was mad. And like, I just knew like, yeah, that was the time. Shoot out, Sharif. No, oh, you yeah. showed out, man. Yeah, and sure, sure. what we yeah. saw there, Yeah. your dance moves was crazy. Yeah. I, we're gonna do that dance move before yeah, you go. I, you know, but I, that used, dance... I used to dance in high school. I've been dancing all my life. Ah. Yeah, I've been dancing all my life. And with my big brother, my, my best friend, Farouk, mm. dancing everywhere. Weddings, we go dance, we take the money back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, now you're in London, you've had a successful show, Banner Boy showed up for you, your performance was incredible. Your voice yeah. was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Shout outs to you, shout out yeah. to your vocal coach. Yeah. That voice is commanding. Yeah, yeah. Now what it, you know what, what what are the girls saying? Obviously your DMs will be popping like crazy yeah, right now. Your phone yeah. looking mad right now. What's yeah. what's that like at the moment? Yeah, still still everywhere, still everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still still everywhere. <laughs> what are we expecting going forward? Um, I know the project is out now. December, you're going back. To, you're mm. going to the states for a show. Now December, now December, I'm doing my show in Ghana, Accra. When? Twenty first. Twenty first. Yeah, La like Palm Royal. That's going to be yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff going on. 21st? And it's going to be, it's like, it just keeps getting bigger. Mm. If you understand me, yeah. Yeah. And what would you, 2023, you know, what's the aspiration? What's your plan? 23, more music, more performances. That's why, yeah. Because you were supposed to perform at the Ghana party in the park. What yeah. happened? Yeah. What happened? You didn't, cause you were in town. I was in town. So why didn't you show up? I was working for. I was working that on my album that time. Mm. Yeah. That was that was when I made oil in my head, waste man and stuff like. Cause you know I was. I just told my team that uh, I need a I need a like fresh place like to finish this whole thing. Cause I had I had been working on the album in Ghana for like mm. a year, 
round towns, you understand me, recording round towns. And I've, I, I needed to link up with some people yeah. here. And, like, and I didn't want the beats sent over to do it. You wanted to be together yeah. with them? Coping it in. That was the time I was working on that thing. And you yeah, couldn't man. come out. Yeah, for real. So who but are next so year? Are, next year, everywhere performing everywhere. <laughs> who are some of the musicians that you're listening to now from Nigeria, Ghana, any part of Africa, mm -hmm. even the UK? Mm -hmm. What artists are you listening yeah. to love, that you're enjoying? I love Brimo from Time. <laughs> yeah, I love Brimo from Time. He's gonna love to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I love Brimo from Time. I love Brenner. Love <laughs> and Sack. From mm. early. Can sack from early. That's why. See, sack lines, I don't know. And that's I don't why. Know who don't know the rap sack, sack lines from class four? Everybody. Yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. And, and the collaboration on the album? 100. That went straight yeah. to number one. Big honor, yeah, trust. What was that that's like? Because you, you, you were. You, you know, like, sack had posted the, the flyer for the album. Hmm. So I hit him up like, landlord, no, nah, this album I'm for day talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you hit him up like, nah, yeah, bro. Yeah, man, for real. I said, Lando, you did forget something. You said, oh, black hole. <laughs> yeah, then we for link before he comes from London or go someplace. Mm. Like, yeah, so like he just, I, he just sent me in, like, I like did that. everything so to come to come home like, that weekend. Yeah, so I got there. We chopped it up. We made songs. We made songs like three. We made like three songs. That's yeah, amazing. Countryside was one of them. And how does it feel to have like a legend like that in the game embrace yeah. young people like yourself yeah, coming in? Cool, how important man. is that? It's it's I just think like it affirms you, you know. Like spiritually. Hmm. You understand me? Cause I did rap this man lines from back class four. Hmm. I had no hits like my teenage self. Hmm. You understand me? And now I'm making music and he appreciates my music. He did blast and pan in Instagram, things like that. Hmm. You understand me? Yeah. And it's it just keeps you going, you understand me? It gives you like a reason. Facts. It, it, it beefs up your reasons to keep going, to keep going, you Fuck. understand me? Yeah. So I just think it's needed. And when Psychologically you, and everything. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when you see DJ Khaled post you. Oh, Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Has he DM'd you yet? Yeah, I, I hate him. Yeah, I hate him. I think I, I thanked him. It's like, bro, going crazy. Your sound is magical. Wow. Yeah. It's much. And I post sometimes, he, he like it. He comments, I keep going, bro, stuff like that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Listen. We're proud of what you're doing. Um, congratulations on the success so far. Mm -hmm. With the show in London was incredible. Anywhere Black was performing, make sure you go and get your tickets to watch an mm -hmm. incredible performance. Yeah. December is going to be crazy. Yeah. And I know 2023 is the next level up. Um, before you go, I just thought, listen, I was lit. Because when you were on stage and you did that soldier, I thought, Psh, listen, <laughs> you've got to do a little bit you know, of, of, of that here. I've got the instrumental. I just, you, you just have to sound that, man, bro. Cause people need to hear that. Let's, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm about to play the instrument. All right. I need you to just, just give me a little bit. You could. Da, 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 da. Dad. My mystery box is somewhere very near. I feel it inside me. I'm feeling very weird. Something we had a chase for years back in the days. If you told me I would see this flag waving, I won't believe you. No. But how far could I go? Yeah. I'm too close, I can feel it. Something is vibrating inside me. I'm celebrating. But outside, they kill me. I want to have the kill me. I want anxiety, my inferiority. What, 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 what? Ah, them want to kill me. Ah, listen, again, yeah. if you ever hear of a black sheriff performance, get your ticket now. This brother is gifted. This is a special brother. We're proud of what you're bringing into the music scene. And from Konongo, 
Gozongo. Shout out to the entire yeah, team. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my brother. Black Sherry! Thank you, brother, man. What?